Time to explore the main <laughs> coast. It's time to explore. Are you ready to go, baby nuts? Are you gonna help us sail? We got good wind today. It's blowing. We got 15 knots. Yeah, it's pretty good, huh? And we're gonna go explore uh, around Penobscot Bay, maybe Vinyl Haven. Yep. We'll see when we get out <laughs> where we end up. <laughs> you ready? Nug's excited. Yeah. She's All right, put go. it in gear. Oh, no the engine's already started, Sierra. It's already running. Two weeks had flown by for us on our very own little island in Maine. But after catching up on some boat projects and enjoying the slice of paradise, we were ready to set sail about 25 miles to the northeast towards a cluster of islands in the center of Penobscot Bay. Bye-bye, beautiful island. Bye-bye, little island. Bye-bye. Hey, what a beautiful spot, huh? Amazing. Wow. We'll be I'm back. excited though. We'll be back. No, I'm stoked. Yeah. The weather is beautiful. We have wind. Yeah. And let's go. Pots are everywhere. And since there's a little bit of swell running, it's actually pretty hard to find them. We're seeing them. Ooh, ending off, huh? Yeah, we're sailing now. Dodging pots. <laughs> so many. It's like a minefield out here. This is the story of Delos. A sailboat adventurizing around the world for the past 10 years. And now we embark on our greatest adventure of all. Come join us as we take to the high seas and travel the world with the newest member of our crew. If you enjoy Delos videos, please subscribe. It's a great way to support our channel. Uh, this is Hurricane Island and uh, there's no other boats here which is amazing. I think there's a couple of moorings. We can take one and if it's nice we can go explore the island. There's like some trails on it we heard. Uh, there's also a giant granite uh, quarry in the middle where they've taken uh, a granite from to build like the Washington Monument and stuff like that. No way. Yeah. All right, ready to go hiking? Yeah, <laughs> Look at me. Look at this thing. I know, I need to show this back. I need to show it with Sierra in yeah, it. Put, put the nugget in it. Yeah, look at yeah. her. It's a pretty sweet one. It's pretty comfortable. It, it, I'm, I'm, it allows you to carry the weight on your hips, you know? Hey, Second too many in. beers. <laughs> Not enough hiking. Let's go. Okay. Looks like some really nice trails. Not very many people around. Oh, and one more sailboat came in. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Wow, there's beautiful views everywhere. Is she getting tired? Oh no. Somebody fell asleep. Feels super nice to just be out walking in the forest. Oh, I feel really inspired. It's like touching the grass and all the smells and sounds. It's great. It's so different from all the other hikes we did in the Bahamas and stuff. Still wearing the same shirt though. Delo shirt. <laughs> They're so great. I love our rash guards. They're for like every weather and every occasion, really. <laughs> you can get yours in the shop. Look at oh. this. This is an amazing view. This forest. 
is this amazing? <laughs> and I'm really stoked that Sierra is sleeping in her backpack so good. I mean, it's the first time we're using it and you never know, so it feels like a big relief since we want to do a lot of hiking. Oh, look at this moss. If we made it to the quarry? Quarry. 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 Wow, cool. The natural beauty of this quarry blew us away, and the fascinating history behind the island was just as impressive. In 1890, the state of Maine led the U.S. in granite production. Thanks to this booming industry, towns began to pop up in places like Vinyl Haven, Dix Island, and right here on Hurricane Island. Hurricane Island was purchased for a thousand bucks on January 18, 1870 by General Davis Tilson with the intent to quarry the island's massive core of beautiful pinkish gray stone. The location seems remote today, but back then, transportation was best over the water, which gave many seaside scories of Penobscot Bay a huge advantage over other parts of the country. The granite quarry on Hurricane Island opened in 1873 and operated all the way until 1914. During that time, the island hosted thousands of people. Demand for granite quarrymen encouraged immigrants from Sweden, Finland, Scotland, Ireland, Spain, and even Italy to come work as stonecutters. Hurricane Island quickly became a cultural melting pot with multilingual schools, musical bands, churches, and even an inner island baseball team. Business was booming, and granite from this quarry right in front of us was used in projects all over the U.S., including such notable landmarks as the Brooklyn Bridge and even the Washington Monument. But the early 1900s saw a slow decline in granite demand as cement became more and more popular and accessible, and railroad improvements allowed other states to transport granite more readily. In 1914, management came out to the island and announced the closing of the quarry. The workers and the families gathered up what belongings they could and were shipped away, transforming the island into a ghost town nearly overnight. Oh, that's beautiful. That'd be a crazy place to scuba dive. Yeah. Oh, look at the birds, yeah. On the map it says that this is a water pump. Huh. So they probably used it to keep the quarry pumped out while they worked. That's a crazy thing. Was it I like is, this is like a heat exchanger, right? And driven by like fire? Yeah, it's a steam engine. Probably a steam powered water pump. Size of that thing. I know. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> Good morning. We're done with the hike. <laughs> what a nice hike, huh? Yeah, it was really nice. She slept pretty much half of the hike. Yeah, she slept three quarters of it. <laughs> with our hike complete, we needed to get back to Delos and make our way to our anchorage for the night at the neighboring island of Vinyl Haven. This, this area looks really awesome. So this is Vinyl Haven Island right here. And uh, I think we'll, we'll enter down here at the south end, go straight up this way. It's wide and deep past Hurricane Island and Greens Island. And then there's just tons of spots that we can find in here uh, that are well protected. We can go all the way up in here. Um, just looks really interesting. What an amazing spot, huh? I know. And it's such a beautiful night, too. So calm. Yeah. It's very special. What do you what have there? What is she doing? She loves eating the mud. From the anchor chain? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she finds it. Oh! Oh! 
Oh, give it to mommy. Can give I the have mud it? to mommy. Can I have it? Oh, oh there you go. Taksamike. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Ahoy Della's tribe. The holidays will be here before you know it, and there's never been a better time to grab that salty sailor in your life, a sun-protecting rash guard shirt, a soft and comfy Delos tea, or maybe even something to keep them warm and cozy this winter. Our holiday sale is on now with items discounted up to 30% off, so be sure to check it out at svdelos.com forward slash shop. Good job! Good job, Sierra! Good job! Cool. Barely see the other boats, huh? I love it. It's so different than anything we've ever sailed in before. Fantastic. Do you see the fog outside? I know, it's so cool. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, and you the can... foghorn? I know. <clears throat> the ferry, probably, right? Yeah. I think I'm going to work on the heater today. It's getting cold. It's getting really cold. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make that my mission. Okay. This morning, I'm going to spend a little time on the heater. I started installing our heater way back in the Bahamas, nearly six months ago, and the cold weather in Maine has encouraged me to finish the project sooner rather than later. I've just finished up uh, with the heat exchanger, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's pretty clean. I had to drill two holes through the floor of this locker. And so we've got these two lines run down. One is uh, feed going down and the other one is the return water. And um, I'm also running the fuel line. So we're getting down to the last, getting down to the very last steps here, which is very cool. If we go into the engine room, as you can see, here's the heat exchanger. So this will take heat from the engine. And we've got the water from the system coming in this side. It picks up heat from the heat exchanger. And then it returns back up to the boiler. So that's looking pretty clean. And then the fuel line is supposed to be pretty uh, sensitive. So you're not to tap into the existing fuel line so I've got to run a new one and then put a new fuel pickup and return uh, inside the main tank and I think I'm just going to run you can see the fuel cables coming in right here here they are so I've got to pull these down uh, I'm going to route them along maybe up here somewhere and then over to up here and then here's an access panel on the tank where I can mount the new pickup and the new fuel return. So we're making progress. Ooh, these fuel lines are looking pretty good. a little bit of a mess here. Oh. What's going on, right? You know, just a standard boat project. I thought it'd be real easy to wire this switch in, but then there's gotta be like a circuit breaker and I don't know, it's never, it's never straightforward. So it requires like every electrical tool that I have, of course. <laughs> the kitchen. Yeah, sorry about that. Hope you didn't want to do anything in the galley. Nah, there's a lot of wires back there too, huh? And so this is the main uh, 24 volt power feed that feeds like most of the things up here. And uh, it has big cables. And so it can, uh, it's no problem to carry the current for the heater. Okay. And so I just wire that in here with my circuit breaker. And then I'll put this switch right in here. I've only been working on it how long? What time did I start today? Like first thing this morning. I haven't gotten shocked yet. 
Oops, that's that good. Yeah. I've seen some sparks. Yeah, but sparks are part of the game. <laughs> okay. Sparks are okay. All right, we have never been closer. We're in the final stretch. I am running the power wires and the power switch. So I've got my wires here. I need to put some ends on them, solder them up, uh, heat shrink tubing and all to make it nice. And then uh, I have the system heat switch with an indication LED that we're gonna install in this panel right there where the old fresh air switch was. And uh, soon we'll be able to test it. My baby helper makes it hard to concentrate. Come here, baby helper. You gonna help me? <gasps> She's playing peekaboo. Peekaboo. <laughs> okay, Sierra, this is called a wire stripper. We use it to strip wires nicely. Put it in there like that, like that, and then magic. Trying to solder this. There you go, right, right there. Yeah, we're going to have to find a different plan. Not working? No. Sometimes I find it's better to take a break and do a project in chunks rather than forcing it. So we decided to spend the afternoon doing a bit of exploring. Meet me. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Delos was anchored in an area known as the Basin Preserve, which is the largest coastal preserve in the entire state. In 2006, the land was donated to the Nature Conservancy and includes over 1,900 acres and four miles of pristine coastline. The area is known for clamming, fishing, and miles upon miles of amazing hiking trails. So quiet. So quiet. Listen. Uh, uh. I can just hear Sierra squawking. <laughs> <laughs> These all must be woodpecker holes. Look at that view, huh? That's awesome. Come on, a little elevation. I was just reading earlier that uh, all this land was donated to a land trust that manages it. And they donated it to the trust on the condition that it would be preserved and not developed uh, for future generations to enjoy. So I think it's pretty amazing. There's nothing around. It's so cool. It's so pristine. No, somebody's already crashed. Can you see her? So we anchored dinghy somewhere down there on the corner. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> Look how much it's gone in the 30 minute walk we had. Look how far down it's gone. It's so good that we anchored Maggie out or we'd be <laughs> stuck on top of that rock right now. <laughs> that would have been crazy. Dealing with big tides has become a critical part of everyday life for us. The tidal changes can vary greatly throughout the state of Maine, with a 9 to 11 foot range in the southern part of the coast, all the way up to 19 feet way down east as you approach the Canadian border. In fact, the highest tidal range in the world is in the Bay of Fundy in the Gulf of Maine, with a range of up to 50 feet. The tides here can also create some really interesting currents and water movement, which we were about to experience the next day. Amazing morning we have, Sierra. What an incredible spa. It's so calm. We swung around a little bit more towards the rocks, but 
smell of the trees. Do you like it? I like it. You can really hear the water rushing through the outlet out. there, or inlet, I don't know what you call it. I guess it's rushing out <laughs> the outlet, but it's probably inlet. <laughs> explore today I think we need to have some breakfast first yeah I think some breakfast is in order I'm getting hungry what's going on in the kitchen this morning it's celebration Saturday breakfast wow what are we having blueberry waffles no way yes way with main blueberries main blueberries mixing it up what do I smell on the stove though <laughs> Celebration Saturday, goodness. <laughs> I think I smell bacon. And you should go look outside at how beautiful it is. We were outside. Were you guys outside? Yeah, we were. It's awesome. We were outside, weren't we? Were we're we? gonna go we explore were. the basin today. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna go explore? She's a berry monster. Mm -hmm. I like berries. She loves berries. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Look at those, they're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you like cooking waffles. I love cooking waffles. I like when you cook waffles. <laughs> waffles. Waffles. Hey. Yum. Main maple syrup, huh? Ooh. Perfect. That looks dang good. Mm -hmm. Mmm, they're perfect. Good stuff. Do you want this? There's no maple syrup on it. I love Saturdays. Mm hmm. There we go. We took off in Maggie to check out a pretty unique and natural feature of the basin known as Reversing Falls. The basin on Vinylhaven is a large body of water on the west side of the island. Because of the huge volume of water that occupies the basin, and the small size of the inlet that lets the water flow in and out, the water actually can't drain or fill fast enough to keep up with the tides. So it creates a waterfall-like effect at the point of the restriction that reverses with each change of the tide. Next on Delos, we explore the remote and beautiful Brimstone Island and find one of our favorite anchorages to date in the 360 degree protection of Seal Cove. Is she scared into submission or is she okay? No, she's chewing on her harness. Oh. <laughs> What did I get? Oh. <laughs> Ryan! Is your head okay? No! It like scraped. 
tree there. <laughs> Look at my mustache. Oh, it's not focusing on me. Oh. Hey, what's in your mouth? <laughs> Butt ruffles. <laughs> Little. Ow! Terrorist! 